what is up everybody welcome back to the channel and welcome finally to the intro to my cfb 25 dynasty i have done a lot of thinking i've done a lot of back and forth on what i wanted to do for this dynasty and the poll helped me a lot with that decision i put the poll out a few of uh, a week or so ago and a lot of you want me to take over a small school and a few of you wanted me to make my own a creation but the majority wanted the small school. That is what we are gonna be going with. And I had a, quite a few options that I was going over. Ball State, Old Dominion, Middle Tennessee State. Uh, th there was a few others in there as well, but I ultimately came down to the decision on where I wanted to go. And I decided to go with Northern Illinois University, the NIU Huskies. Now, if you're not familiar with the NIU Huskies, they are a school located about 30 to 45 minutes outside of like the outskirts of Chicago in DeKalb, Illinois. And DeKalb, interestingly enough, is the birthplace of barbed wire and the home of Cindy Crawford. But we're here to worry about this football team. Now the football team, the NIU Huskies, they have been through a little bit of a rough patch. They had a very strong run in the 2010s, like 2010 to like 20, I think 16, 17. They were a very formidable team. They did a lot of good things in the Mid-American Conference. But in 2020, things started going a little bit south. They ended up losing, I think, all of their conference games. And since then, they just haven't really been able to bounce back outside of, you know, oh, maybe a winning record here and there, getting things done. But the bottom line is this school is nowhere near where it was say 10 15 years ago and i'm hoping to try and change that a little bit here with this dynasty the fun part about this we're gonna have to work extra hard this is a one star program this is one prestige there's not a lot of you know bells and whistles we're gonna have when it comes to recruiting we're gonna have to recruit from homegrown talent and use our resources within our own structure of of area to, to formulate the best team and hopefully start drawing the interest of some others outside that want to come and play for the NIU Huskies. And as you can see here, looking at the ratings, 74 overall team, 67 offense, 68 defense. There's going to be a lot of work to be done just in the in the right now, but also going into the future. The one other caveat to this, I loved the, the design, like the, the red and black look. I thought that looked great. and was part of the reason that I wanted to go with NIU. But I'm going to be honest, guys. They did not do you guys many favors in the uniform department in this game. I'm not sure why the jersey is gray and black when the pants are red and black and white and the helmet's red and black. And I, I'm not sure. I, I've seen some stuff online when I was you know, doing a little background research with this team to tell me that this team has much better looking uniforms. Now, I don't know if they're the current ones or not, but I found more of a, a base set that it looked like they used to wear or they they do wear normally that looked much better than what this game offered you guys up now i saw a, an opportunity there to do the best of both worlds and that's exactly what i did so i decided to go ahead and not only take over a small school but give them a facelift give them a rebrand with the new coaching staff coming in as myself and hopefully if we're looking good we're feeling good we can play good and eventually make other people want to play good with us while we're looking good i think that made sense but anyways let me show you the jerseys that i came up with for the niu dynasty so i decided to take what was already there and just improve upon it in my own eyes i hope you guys like these jerseys if not i'm sorry but this is what i decided to go with and what i think looks really nice we have a lot of different options here i made sure to do a ton of different helmets, jerseys, and pants so that I could have a, a plethora of choices when it comes to game day and what to wear. Our base helmet is just gonna be a very simple matte black helmet with a chrome NIU logo on it. I think it looks nice, it looks clean. And then the jerseys, just a simple black, some red accents. And now the red itself is a little bit lighter, but this is what is in the logo. And if it wasn't chrome, it would show that. Um, so that's what I went with. I just wanted to use the same colors that the school had. I do think it looks really nice. I like the pop. Uh, down on the pants, I went with the Huskies on the pant leg on all of the pants and just in different variations to, to match up with different jerseys and to just give it a different feel every time you look at them. Uh, the, of course, we know that there's a bug with the actual 
attire that they wear like the accessories like the arm sleeves and stuff that looks makes it look much brighter than it really is but this is what i'm working with for the home jerseys of the huskies i also wanted to make sure i stayed true to the school and made sure to have the niu logo on one of the helmets i had to do some work to get this dog head flipped around for it to make sense on the helmet but i think it looks all right and then it's much more of a simple design with the black jersey um not a whole lot of real big stuff on there just a simple helmet simple jersey and then the black pants here with the white the red outline instead to give that a little extra flair as well so this is going to be our two uniforms that have like more of a black theme to them so this here is one of the first road options we have we have two different options with the whites and this one i wanted to make sure we had a secondary helmet to go along with it so we just did a modified niu logo that matches up with the black and red theme a white helmet nice pinstripe down the middle to sort of bring it together and then the jersey itself is the black and red theme as well along along with the pants and i really thought this looked very very clean and should look really cool on game day for sure i also wanted to do my own spin on an away jer jersey so i did this red option where it's much more heavily embracing the red same with the helmet the regular logo chrome matte white helmet chrome red face mask red accents on the jerseys instead of the black so we'll have this as an option as well and then the final option is this all red option now i don't mean to have these uniforms all set in the way that they're set right now i made the uniform set to where i could mix match jerseys with helmet with pants and all and, and etc to make an, a unique look almost every week but this helmet man i toyed around with an alternative helmet and i just I felt like it's college football. You have to have a helmet that's chrome colored, man. It just, it feels right, right? You don't see that in the NFL. We're in college, we're gonna be flashy. So I put together this chrome red helmet with black accents, a red jersey, which this is actually more what I saw out of NIU as a normal jersey option for them. Obviously mine is a little different than what theirs is. Theirs didn't have as many black accents on it, but this was, the, the normal home jersey red with black lettering and, and numbering and a little bit of a stripe on the on the side so i just sort of spruced it up a little bit in my own vision we have pant options for all of these that have the the different logos that match up with different jerseys and we'll be able to mix and match the red helmet with the black jersey or the white jersey and it all sorts of things i think overall it's going to look really good when we're able to pick and choose what we want to look like week to week depending on the opponent we're taking on and depending on the moment you know if it's a big game i need to break out the chrome helmets you know that kind of a feel so this is the uniform concept that i came up with i hope you guys enjoy it if you guys want to use these uniforms or any other ones that i've created i'm actually going to probably start doing that on the side for content let me know down below if you guys think that's cool taking colleges that are not in the game or maybe just don't have a great uniform set remaking them or creating them from scratch and then uploading them for you guys to use. Um, I've done, uh, with the help of some of my buddies in the RFL, uh, Delaware State, Virginia State. And then of course I did my Explorers team, which is my RFL team. If you guys are not aware of that, check that out. And then also of course NIU. I do plan on doing a few more. Some of you guys have asked me to do a couple and I am planning on doing it. Um, like Fisk University is one somebody mentioned for me to do. I think there was one other one that I'm not remembering right now, but if you guys want to try these out, here is my username up in the top right corner, Bill Nick 90 If you go to the download center and search by username, put that in, you should be able to see all the ones that I've created. Download them for yourself and use them. I, I just have generic teams in there. Um, so, I mean, not, not sure what you want to do with that. If you want to use a different school's roster or whatnot, I didn't care too much about that. Now my explorers, I did throw a couple of, of really big players on there because I wanted to, I wanted to mess around with them a little bit. But, you know they have a powerhouse roster but everything they also every other roster is like cupcake or average joe or something along those lines something very simple but yeah if you want to check them out go ahead and plug that username into the search engine on the dine or the download center and you'll be able to download these uniforms and use them yourselves as well and now on to the important part let's get this dynasty started we're going to go ahead and import the team builder here of course we're going to replace the niu huskies with my own build and then yeah here are the other ones that i've made this was an old build that i made this is the one that i was not able to use because of the the crash and i made some changes since then it's relatively the same as the one i have here 
So, I mean, I don't know, maybe you guys prefer that one instead and you like that, you can use either option, but I wanted to make sure I included the Husky logo, so that's why I redid everything. And then here's the Virginia State. This one is, it, it looks trashy. This is the one I just used for my, my how-to video. Now, onto the settings, and a lot of you have been asking for my sliders. Right now, um, I'm running Heisman, and it's pretty much base settings right now. I am gonna be running a cooldown though. I'm gonna run a cooldown of four and then a limit of eight. We're running 12 minute quarters with an accelerated clock at 13 right now, but everything else is the same as, as it is right here. Um, I don't have any you know plans on doing anything crazy right now. The one area that I'm looking at right now for the sliders is, and this is with the help of my, my buddies uh, Smitty and Rob or aka Mix in the RFL they've been doing a lot of testing as well and we all sort of have a, an agreement that what we're seeing is really good and we're seeing a lot of good things from just standard Heisman play um, interceptions can be a little wonky tackling can be a little rough and uh, roughing the kicker is bad so right now what I'm going to be doing once we get in here is adjusting those so I'll show you guys that here as well all right we're going to be the head coach of course and we are gonna, I'm a little upset they don't have the actual coach in here, but we're gonna create my own coach. We of course are gonna go recruiter because obviously we're gonna need to be able to recruit down the line if we wanna turn this school into something amazing. I'm gonna use my old, I'm gonna go ahead and use my name here for the coach. It's also what I'm known as in the RFL for the um, Columbus Explorers coach. If you guys know me from there, Shout out to you. If you don't, you should probably check it out. RFL, Relocation Football League, it's coming back. It's going to be big and strong, and it's going to be awesome. So check that out. Um, Alma Mater is going to be Wisconsin Pipeline. I thought about this, and I feel like the only way to do this properly, because we're going to have to do, you know, we're going to have to use what we have available around us. This is the way NIU has done things in the past, but Illinois does not have a pipeline, right? Um, they just, they just don't, um, I don't feel like it's right to go up to Michigan or Metro. So I think what I'm going to end up doing, I think I'm going to end up using Wisconsin here. I wish they had an Illinois one or at least one that was like maybe Midwest or something, but they don't have that as an option. So we're just going to go with Wisconsin as my pipeline. I, there's not really anybody that looks like me in this game. Apparently you're not allowed to be bald as a head coach in CFB 25. Did not know that was a requirement to have a full head of hair. Um, so we're just going to find somebody with a beard that sort of resembles, uh, I guess, me in a, in a sense. Um, sure, we'll go with this guy. I definitely don't have that much hair, but he's got a big head and so do I. So we'll just go with this dude. So this is our coach now. And now we get a chance to sign our contract. I'm going to stick with the same playbooks that NIU uses. Not sure if it'll stay that way or not, but that is what they run. So that is what we are going to run. So we're going to run the Northern Illinois offense, which is a pro style, which is good. And then we're going to run the 4-2-5 defensive scheme, which essentially is just nickel package, which most defenses run anyway. So I'm happy with that. All right. Now that we are in the dynasty, this episode is probably just going to be going over the team, getting to know them, and then maybe looking at the recruiting board, getting things set up and maybe getting to week one. Not 100% sure yet how much we're going to do, but we're here. So let's get started. We have a three-way race going on between Ethan Hampton, who has been here for three years four years yeah this is his fourth season um and the first three years he spent backing up rocky lombardi who was the former quarterback of the niu huskies he has recently gone on to the nfl and is currently on the Bengals roster fighting for a roster spot any luth ended up committing to niu in december of last year jalen macon came over from arkansas pine bluff and he actually brought along what appears to be a teammate of his at a wide receiver that we'll see, we'll see in a few minutes here. But right now, it's sort of a three-way race between these two with Hampton leading the way. He's been here the longest. He's got the most, you know, he's got the most knowledge of the playbook. So he will be the front runner to land that job. But, I mean, if we see something out of Macon or Luth, I'm, I'm not going to say no. And You know what I mean? Like, we, we got to win games. And then we get to the running backs, and this is sort of the star of the team, Ontario Brown. He is a senior, so this will be probably his only season with us, but he is a beast at a running back, 85 overall. Really knows how to break away and get into open space and get the tough yardage was from what I have seen. Gavin Williams has been a really good one-two punch with him for NIU. 
And then after that, there's a lot of question marks um, and a lot of, uh, yeah, we I mean, we, we have two seniors at the top, but after this year, we really don't have many other options, right? I mean, Gavin Williams may be able to stay, but it's just, yeah, it, it's just going to be a very difficult situation. I mean, this running back room is going to have to have a full-on facelift in the next year or two. And Kenji Lewis is the man that I was referring to. He came over from Arkansas Pine Bluff with Jalen Macon and is the number one receiver, which is sad because he's only a 69 overall. Also on the transfer portal, we got Andrew McElroy, who came over from St. Thomas. So two new receivers to go along with a potentially new quarterback. And it's going to be really anybody's game because we have Jalen Johnson and Kyle Thomas. Thomas, by the way, redshirted freshman, has seen some good things on the highlight tapes from him. He made a couple of plays last season. And then also, I mean, he's 6'2", 174, and he, he's got a lot of life left, whereas McElroy is on his last year. Uh, Kenji Lewis, depending on how things go, maybe he stays, maybe he goes. We don't know what these guys are going to do, and we might lose a lot of these guys to, you know, the transfer portal or to the pros at, at some point. So we're going to have a lot of work to do, but we want to make sure that we're not putting ourselves in a bad spot. Kyle Thomas and Jalen Johnson do, could have a bright future. We just don't know yet. The weird thing is Kyle Thomas is the only one that has a physical ability. He has the recoup ability. Um, no other receiver has that, but I mean, with the ratings that these guys have, I'm not too shocked. At tight end, Grayson Barnes, who has been here for a few years now, he is also a senior. He is one of our best players as well, an 82 overall. So far, the second best player on this offense. Jake Applegate is a new transfer as well, coming over from Nebraska. He will take over the backup role and hopefully take over for Grayson Barnes unless we end up finding somebody different after that. We also have two other seniors here, Chris Carter and Tristan Tuiz. I think it's Tuiz, Tuiz? We'll say Tuiz. Chris Carter though, 6'7", 240 pounds. I wish he wasn't a senior because then maybe we could try and work with him a little bit to, to build him up with that height, but I don't think we'll be able to get that done in one season if he even sees the field. And then a lot of who knows at the bottom here, but we do have a couple of freshmen that might jump onto the scene. Jay Sean Thomas and Hyatt T T Timoshek. Timoshek? I think it's Timoshek, but he's 6'6", 220 pounds. So if, if Hyatt can end up, you know, bursting onto the scene and getting a lot better, that could be really big for us down the line. Offensive line, we have a lot of, I would say, middle of the road quality players for this level of football. We have Drew Hoff at left tackle. JJ Lip at uh, left guard. He is a senior. Logan Schernitz. Schernitz. Oh my God, I don't know how to say that name. Logan Schernitz. We're going to go Schernitz. If I'm wrong, let me know. We also have Thomas Ash. <laughs> Ash. Thomas Pash, who is a freshman. Um, we also have John Champ. John Champe at right guard. And then we have Evan Buss at the right tackle position. Uh, we also have a sophomore in uh, Abathar, Abiathar Curry. Abiathar? I think it's I think it's not a trick. That's not silent. Abiathar Curry. So he's probably gonna be pushing for a spot too on this field. I mean, we have a redshirt senior and a redshirt sophomore. This guy's got a, a much longer future in terms of college football for us than Buss does. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out. On defense, Ivan Davis is at the left end position. We also have a redshirted sophomore in Cam Crowell. I'm not sure he's going to fit the role as what I want the defense to do very well, uh, but we do have two power rushers here, so we should make it be able to make it work. Crowell also has two different physical abilities, duress and recoup. Going over to the right side, Kevin Session is our starter at right end, a junior redshirt who also is has the recoup ability. It seems to be the only thing that any of these guys have. And then behind session is Pierce Opong, who is another senior. So defensive end is not a strong need, but it's there's a lot of depth here, I feel like, for what we have as starters, right? Like if session goes down, Opong could probably take over and play some games for us. Same here with Davis and Crowell. At D tackle, we have a lot of seniors, a lot. Damon Taylor Jr., redshirt senior, 75 overall. Skylar Gill Howard, who is a redshirt junior, 72 overall. And then we have two seniors in Cade Haberman, Haberman and Devante O'Malley. Then it jumps off a cliff down to a 59 with Mark Hensley and Tristan Hilliard. Outside linebackers, Christian Furman, 
senior linebacker for us at 74. In the middle, we have a redshirt sophomore in Jake Gassaway, who I think has a lot of potential here. He's got two physicals, robber and house call. So that is going to come in handy for us down the line. And he could really grow into a big impact player for us at the middle linebacker position. And then going to the outside, Jaden Dolphin is the outside linebacker on the right. He is a senior, 74 overall, and we really do not have depth behind him there at all as well. Same with the left outside. Um, the best spot we have is middle. Luckily for us, we run a 4-2-5, which means it's going to be primarily two linebackers, which I'm assuming is going to probably end up being Dolphin and Gassaway, considering they're both pass coverage guys. And Furman is a run stopper, so he's not really going to fit too well into the mold of the nickel set linebacker. At corner, this is where one of the fan favorites is, Javon Bird. He is a senior, house call physical, and fan favorite mental. So there you go, fan favorite. He is our top defensive player at an 80 overall. And he al we also have another senior here in Jashan Prophet, who has quick jump as his physical. I feel like we actually have some pretty good depth at corner. The only problem is three of the top four guys are all seniors. Cameron Dabney as, as well being the other one that I'm mentioning. But we do have Jacob Finley here, who is a redshirted sophomore at a 76. So that is somebody we'll definitely want to build up to eventually be one of these two guys up here. At free safety, we have Nate Valcarcel. Valcarcel? Valcarcel. I, oof, okay. Nate is his name, and he is a senior as well. Behind him, we have Trey Porter, who is a redshirt sophomore at a 71. We also have Cyrus Mc, McGarrell. Cyrus McGarrell, I think his name is, who is a redshirted junior at a 70. Here at the strong safety, Jordan Hansen is right now, I guess, the presumed starter. But with Muhammad Jamey here as a junior and the same overall, I feel like, depending, I mean, the speed isn't the best, but in certain packages, we might want to make sure we're getting Jamey involved. We have Kanan Woodell as, as our kicker and Jake Siebert as well. And then punter is Tom Foley. All right, so as I mentioned before with the, the sliders, there are a few things that I would like to adjust based off of the talks and the stuff that I've seen from uh, the guys that I work with in the RFL. And a lot of it has to do with just what a lot of people have been talking about. Interceptions and the lack of tackling and uh, roughing the kicker issues. So I mean, really what we want to try to do is limit the, limit the interceptions to at least an understandable amount. So I think what we're going to try to do to limit the interceptions a little bit is we're going to drop this to 45. I'm going to raise tackling to 55. We're going to go back down here to defense. So interceptions down to 45, tackling up to 55 and see what happens there. I am also going to be adjusting injuries. I'm not sure what I'm going to set them to yet, but I know that usually it's at like 10 in Madden. So I'm going to probably start with like 15. And if I don't see enough, obviously we'll increase it. And then looking at the penalties down here, one thing considering what I was told is that running into the kicker is a huge issue. We're just gonna turn that off, right? Uh, we just don't need it. I, I just, I don't even wanna deal with it, right? I'd rather I'd rather never have a running into the kicker or roughing the kicker penalty than have too many of them. That's just my take on it. So I'm just gonna leave that off. And then that is what we're gonna start with, but everything else is at default. I just feel really, really good with what I've seen so far. Uh, the guys have been doing a lot of streams just showing off the gameplay and i've done a few myself and i just heisman has been where it's at heisman on pretty much default except for these two changes and then turning off roughing the kicker stuff that's all i'm going to be changing at this time we'll see if things change down the line i think one of the main reasons that everything is showing as a need is because we have 29 seniors on this roster 29 so that is right off the bat 29 players that we know are going to be out of eligibility after this season that's not even taking into account if any of these juniors end up you know playing out of their minds and going off to the draft or something like that or the transfer portal that's just 29 people we know for a fact are going to be gone because they're in their fourth and final year of eligibility and this this is going to be a tough rebuild this team is going to look very different after probably just one season all right so one thing i ended up doing here was i did adjust my coach to be a pipeline of Indiana because it's literally right next door to Illinois and that way maybe we can get more farther south as also a pipeline whereas if it's Wisconsin you know it, it could end up making Illinois 
harder to hit. I, I hope that makes sense, right? Because Illinois and, and Indiana are next to each other, whereas Wisconsin is on top of Illinois. So Illinois players thinking Wisconsin's a pipeline, you know, it might seem like it's farther away. It made sense to me, so I just did it. So <laughs> our, our pipeline is Indiana. All right, so I switched it to any state, top five school. And right now, the only quarterback that's even remotely interested in us is Kevin Neal, a two-star prospect out of Chicago. And we are right now trailing Miami of Ohio at second. And we're going to have to add him to the board, which I already did, because, I mean, if that's the only decent option we have at quarterback, we got to go for it because we don't know what's going to happen with the guys we got. We don't know if they're going to be here after the season. I'm pretty sure at least one or two of them is going to leave through transfer, depending on who ends up getting the starting job. And we're not 100% sold on if those are the answers for us. So we're going to have to go after that quarterback. We do have some better options here with running backs. Deontay Streeter out of Summit Argo, Illinois, 5'11", 194. He is a three-star recruit. And we have him, he has a second behind Michigan. So that's going to be a tough one to, oh, to, to go against, but hopefully we can try it out. And then our next one here is Earl Owens, who has us listed as fourth right now, but it's it's really close. Same with, with this one. I mean, we're we're trailing a little bit with Michigan for Streeter, but Owens, we're, we're all pretty much tied here. All top five teams are like dead even. And we only have one receiver, Junior Abram. But, I mean, three-star prospect at wide receiver is not bad. Right now we are at number five, but again, it's the same situation sort of as it was with the running back where all five are sort of neck and neck right now. So we're gonna go ahead and add him to our target board. Tight end, we don't have as many options. We have Clay Payne, who is, we're leading right now. And also Nicholas Hamilton, who is a one star and we have, has us at four. Okay. I am really not a fan of Clay Payne at all. It sucks, but like, dude, you're six one. You can't play tight end. You know what I mean? Like, I get this as college, but like six one, dude, you're like a fullback. Yeah, I'm just gonna come back to this later because I don't see a need to really jump the gun on this tight end and or this one. I know we're leading right now, but I really don't foresee us bringing in a six one tight end. Heading over to the offensive tackle position, right tackle, Caleb Lucian is our top option it looks like he is a two-star and he has us at second right behind nebraska right now we are leading with tim tremble so we're definitely going to add him to the board that's a two-star prospect right there and then i i still want to add lucian as well because i feel like that's going to be important later on see like this guy here tracy john he's only a one star He's pretty much already committed to his top team. I, I mean, that's gonna be a lot of scouting we have to put into this just to be able to be considered. I really don't wanna go through that much hassle for a one star, no offense. We could come back to one of these guys later on, but we'll, we'll see what happens. But right now we have two tackles, two right tackles that are at least willing to come to us. And then getting to the inside, we only have two guys, a left guard and a right guard. Sam Cole, who is just starting his Oh, journey, I guess, if you will, with his recruiting. We're going to go ahead and add him to the board. And then we also have Kerry Hillman, who does have a deal breaker. But right now, we're, we're meeting it just fine. It's his playing time, or pro it's his proximity to home, which means that we should be working well in that respect. And then at center, it says that we don't need one, but I'm pretty sure we still do. So we are going to definitely look at one of these two guys. Both of them are relatively similar in ranking. I feel like both of these guys could be a decent option. Right now, Jaleel Gills is coming from Juco, whereas Ara Paytas is coming from straight out of high school in Wisconsin. We're both in top five consideration. He already has down to top eight, so it's gonna be one of us. We're at number five, but I almost feel like it's just by default because there's literally no color in our bar at all. Um, but again, we'll just add him to the board because I mean, we, we're gonna need centers at some point. Moving on to defensive end. There we go. We finally have an option here for a, a decent guy, a three-star, Tim Presley. And I think we're going to have to go after this guy strong because we need some serious presence on the defensive front. Um, and anytime we can get, you know, a 670 rate ranking guy here, we're going to have to try. Even though we're behind Wisconsin, Michigan State, and Iowa, we still got to give it a shot. Sidney Dunham is a, a speed rusher, so that would work out well for us. 
And we're pretty much tied for first. So I'm going to go ahead and add him to the board. We have no defensive tackle that is remotely interested in us. So that's awesome. Outside linebacker, we have a few. But remember, we need pass coverage guys, maybe run stopper. But we still want to make sure they have some type of, you know, pass coverage ability if we're going to bring them on. Trevor Kiki is a three-star prospect right now, 6'2", 222. We are right at the cusp of third place and close to second place. Minnesota and Wisconsin leading right now. He might be worth a spot here. Plus, his rank is 522, so we definitely want to try to get him added. Um, this one is pretty much across the board, but we don't need a power rusher that would not fit our scheme at linebacker, so we're just going to skip right over him. Same with Caleb Rasmussen. I would like to move him down on the on the line, but I don't know how that would work with with this yet. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna shy away from this a little bit and not adjust things too much because if you change somebody's position, sometimes it can make them like like immediately want to leave and transfer portal. And there are still some bugs they're working out. Um, so I'm just gonna hold off on that for now. Ricky Treor is a one star recruit. He has pass coverage. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add him to the list. And we also have Leon Widmer. Um, actually, I feel like, I feel like Widmer might end up being a better option here for us. Let's add both I mean, we're going to need linebackers regardless. We have one player, a two star Ahmad Carter, 6'2", 239. We're at the bottom of the list. We're going to add it to the list anyway. Nothing at corner. Um, you know what? I, I changed my mind. I'm going to take a chance here. I think I want to try and do Caleb Rasmussen because we're really close to first. And if I can move him down, I mean, we'll just, we'll learn from our mistakes, right? And then we have not a single corner. That is gonna be tough because we have two seniors at corner right now. So we're gonna have to do some digging for that. Hopefully maybe transfer portal or we can swing a, a deal with somebody who's not that interested in us. Um, free safety, we have two guys, Rafael Devi and then Lane Cantrell. Um, looks like Lane Cantrell, they're both going to be somewhat similar in recruiting efforts, but I do like Cantrell is at least six foot and he's 222 pounds. So maybe I'll just add both of these guys for now. We have plenty of room in our target range and then strong safeties. Okay. We have nobody. So yeah, both safeties will be, will be good. Nobody for special teams. Before we get too far into it, let's take a look at our staff. So obviously we're as green as can be. Um, our offensive coordinator is has got some good stuff in recruiting. He has passing game two out of four, running game two out of four, receiving game two out of four, and blocking two out of four, which is actually pretty big, which means we're going to have less time to fully scout quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, offensive line. Also, recruiting action gives bonus to all of those positions as well. Plus, he also has passing game, so... QBs gain additional interest for every 10 hours spent. Running backs, the same thing. And then lasting impression, so receiving as well and upsell. So my school grades have a larger impact. Okay, so we have some good stuff for our with our coordinator that should help us out with our, our recruiting goals here. Um, our defensive coordinator, though, does not care about recruiting. He is just a master motivator. And he can get X, bigger XP gain whenever a player levels up. So... That will come in handy for our defense later down the line. But so right now we have our offensive coordinator working overtime. So I'm wondering if maybe we want to spend this, this on our defense then. I did do a couple of linebackers. So I'm going to go ahead and do advanced look on linebackers as our first purchase. Going through all of the lists, I ended up finding one five-star that I'm willing to try and, and go look at. And that's Denton Paul. The reason for that is we're not on the board but none of these teams are that high up on the board and this guy is looks like he's gonna be a beast so we're gonna scout him and see if he's worth really pursuing here we only have 500 hours so we have to keep that in mind but with us being able to get a little boost here oh yeah this guy is gonna look he's already looking Ooh, okay so he's a four star if you guys don't know what this means, when they are a bust like that, they have the red X, that essentially means that they are going to be like one tier lower than what their rating is. So he's probably gonna be a four star, which is still a very good player. 
Plus, he has a mental and an ability, uh, a physical ability, blow up and clear headed. I would like to take a look at Kevin Neal as well, the quarter, the first quarterback that we found. So let's see what he's looking like. 84 throw power, not too bad. Accuracies are, you know, about average. Okay, so he's not gonna have any abilities or mentals, but um, not bad. Awareness 72, that's not bad for a guy coming out of high school. We did that, we did that, we did all that, okay. I think it's time for us to go ahead and get us into the regular season. We don't have a game or anything like that, so let's just go ahead and advance. The recruiting update from the first advanced summary is not too, nothing crazy. Tim Tremble, that is the right tackle. He has narrowed it down to his top eight, which we are second, so no worries there. Um, it looks like we did get opt by somebody. Okay, so we'll have to give him an offer. And then two players right now at risk of transfer are J well, Jalen Macon, which we sort of already knew, and then Pridgen at running back, who, oh my God, you're a 50 overall. Oh my God, please don't transfer. But anyway, um, that is what the summary is so far. We are on our bye week. Let's go ahead and get our recruiting started here. This is gonna be important because we really need to start getting some stuff done. We're gonna go right down the list here. We're gonna start with uh, Kevin. We're gonna go ahead and add a, offer a scholarship to him right away to make sure we get that out of the way. And then here, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to uh, DM the player just to see what kind of response we get out of it. We do know right now that his proximity to home is a green check mark, which is good because that's like the only thing that we have going for us, it seems like. Um, is at, at an A, everything else is C minus and D, which is gonna make this that much harder for us to recruit prospects for. So hopefully we can really sell him on the fact that we're right in his backyard. I really wanna go hard into Deontay Streeter here. He's a three-star prospect. We're right behind Michigan still. And we are also, you know, in his wheelhouse of what he is looking for, for which is a proximity to home. I wanna get this all squared away so we know what we're looking at. Okay, so he as well, he's gonna be more of a two-star, which is fine. He has two mentals, road dog and team player. So, I mean, that's gonna be a big deal. We're gonna go ahead and offer him a scholarship. And then for him, we're also going to do, we're new contact friends and family, get that added in there, see if we can overtake Michigan here. We're very, very close. And we offered him a contract. They have, or offered him a scholarship. They have not yet. Junior Abram, this is the 6'5", 187 receiver from Chicago here. So let's go ahead and let's get him scouted. And he is a good player. Okay, so he is gonna be at about a four star. He doesn't have the best speed. I mean, well, he's got good speed, but I mean acceleration, but he does have 85 spectacular catching and he's 6'5". So in my mind, that's worth everything. We're gonna go scholarship. And then honestly with him, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just send the house and see if we can really jump up the board here and see about getting him here in NIU. And then for Peter McCaleb, 6'3", 187, we are much farther down the list, but there really hasn't been a lot of movement so far. Let's go ahead and get uh, see what we're working with here with him. 78 acceleration. I really do not like that. But we know Denton Paul, that jumped up very quickly, which doesn't surprise me. He's a five star. Even without that, he's going to be a four star. But Ahmad Carter is, we are fifth on his list. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scout him. Okay, so he's right in line. And he has two mentals, Road Dog and Team Player. So I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to offer him a scholarship. And then we're also going to contact friends and family. There we go. And see where that puts us. Right now we are in fifth place. If we can jump Minnesota, we could get ourselves a decent linebacker to, to start building this program with, hopefully. Corner is where it's gonna get difficult. We don't have anybody who really cares about us. <laughs> the only one that is, even has us in the top 10 is Nate McGloster. Mick Gloucester. What a name, man. Let's just see what he's what he's got. Oh, okay. So change of direction looks like it could be pretty good. 83 Excel. Ah. Not too very, not very good for a corner. E5 speed. He is 6'2", though. 73 play rec. That's not bad. 55 awareness. Yikes. Okay. This is going to be a tough sell, guys. This, this is going to be a very, very tough sell. What we're probably going to end up doing is, is watching a few games this season 
seeing if we can bring in some players and then maybe start speeding things up a little bit as to when we can really start making some noise but we're gonna have to have some success up front in order to start changing the tides a little bit of this program nobody has really made any movement on gainwell so i'm gonna try and use that to my advantage here 83 speed golly man all right we're just gonna get him fully scouted 55 awareness zone coverage is a 64 man coverage 73 I went ahead and offered him a scholarship. I just want to see if that puts us in any movement at all. We can always, you know, rescind that if need be. I really want to try and make sure we're at least getting the guys that we can get. Deontay Street is going to be probably a two-star. Um, we're number two right now. If we can over jump Michigan, that's going to be big. Uh, wide receiver is another one that we really need to try and hit home on. So that's why we went and sent the house with Abram. I think we have to try for McCaleb as well finish that out and just see what his scouting is okay so i mean i guess it's not that bad um we'll go ahead and offer him a contract i'm not going to go full in on him right now we're just going to dm him and just see where the thing where like we're what kind of movement we get with that compared to miami of ohio and whatnot and then one other person that we did not get a chance to really look at was paul carew who i really want to try and scout so we're going to go ahead and do that here and this is going to cost us all of our points, but we can at least get an idea of what he'll be. We'll offer him a scholarship and we'll see if that can sway his opinion and get us a little bit farther up that list. Then we can do one more scholarship for the week. Um, let's do that with Tremble here to see if that gets us back up the board a little bit. Okay, so the recruiting update once again. So we have nailed down that we have gotten the top five schools for Joel Mixon. We got closed out from him. That was the right guard. We're still on board with Streeter, who now we are number one by a long shot. Um, we're also number one by a long shot with Junior Abram. We got our butts whooped with Presley, but we could probably change that this week. And then Caleb Rasmussen which is the power rusher we're far down the list on. We also got locked out from Jalen Elias. Not really a surprise there. Wisconsin just flew out of the water with him. John Shembo as well. And then Denton Paul, which was, I think, what we saw coming anyway. All right, so we have a little bit more time now. Let's go through our list here and let's go ahead and let's make sure we take guys off the list that are already telling us to kick rocks. I really want to make a big push on Presley here because I know we're going to need defensive line so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get him scouted fully hopefully he's good okay he's not a bust which is good we're gonna offer scholarship for him and then we're also gonna go ahead and we're gonna send the house he's a three star i mean this is the this is probably like the our five star for a bigger program so we're gonna go ahead and send the house on him see if we can catch up with wisconsin here hasn't been any movement with james kindred here we're gonna try and see if i can scout him out and 81 power moves, 80 acceleration. I already like what I'm seeing. I'm going to go ahead and offer him a... He's got DL Rally. I'm going to try and save some points here so I can offer him a scholarship and then also send the house on him and see if that gets us up into the top five. Because like right now, it seems like all the teams are, you know, sort of tied. So if we can set ourselves apart... We might be able to land somebody good like Kindred, which is a huge need for us right now, considering we have so few options. Trevor Kiki, that was the outside linebacker. Um, I'd like to bring him in, but I don't know. I mean, we haven't done anything with him. Let's try and scout him a little bit. 80 pursuit. Play recognition. Okay, yeah, we're definitely going to recruit him. Add. Send the house on him. That leaves us 25 points for this week. Ahmad Carter, just doing what we did with the scholarship, got us way out in front with him. But now what I want to do is I want to try and find the guys that are that we can really take first place on, like Jaleel Gills here. Or even we could jump Wisconsin potentially for Carlos Carapatatas. I, I know I said that wrong. Um I, I just I know it. I know it. Um Caleb Lucian is somebody that we could try. Oh man, it's tough though. Acceleration could be good. Pass block finesse could be good. Strength is 76. 
we're gonna go ahead and offer him a contract and all right so i did everything i could with what the points we had we are this is going to be a tough one guys i don't know if we're going to hit like a quarter of the guys that i targeted but we can always go back and change who we're targeting and whatnot and find some more one star two star guys i just wanted to try and get out front with some of these but our first game is going to be against fcs midwest i'm gonna definitely try and do a little bit of a different feel than what i do for my madden franchise because i feel like a dynasty it needs to go at least at the bare minimum 10 years if not 15 i can't do four years five years like i too i can in madden and still have a good story you really need to to see the full story here for the college so we're probably going to do a little bit more of a quicker way that we than we normally do let me know down below if you guys are okay with that or if you guys want me to go back to full-on games but i think i'll find a good balance here but i think for now we're just going to go ahead and set the depth chart and then it's time to take on fcs midwest as we get started here on offense, Ethan Hampton under center. He's going to take a snap. He looks short, and he finds a tight end, I believe. And right off the bat, Granson of FCS West goes out. Midwest, sorry, goes out with an injury. Gain of five on the play. It's going to take me a while to get used to the names on here for sure. And there goes a handoff to Brown, and he goes right up the guts for a big run. Gain of 12. And there's another handoff for Brown, and once again, he is shut down. Second and nine. Hampton with the snap under pressure. Gets rid of it to Brown in the flats, and he gets it out to the 41. we go hurry up here. Third and four coming up. Brown tired. And it's going to be another handoff to him, and he will get the first. And now we have a fresh set after the short run, but Brown has to be a handoff. No play action, rollouts, and it goes nowhere. Ends up hitting the turf. First incompletion of the day for Hampton. And this one's going to go to Brown again. Breaks off of one. Breaks off of a second tackle, a third, and he's finally dragged down. Wow, what a play there by Ontario Brown. A huge run breaking off of three tackles, I think it was, and another injury for Midwest. That's not good. And they're going to go right back to him. Why not? Five carries, 29 yards for Brown so far on the day. We'll go right back to him. His sixth carry breaks off of a, the first line of defense, and he'll get six yards. So far, I'm liking the offense. I love the run game. Get Brown involved. He's our best playmaker. And there's a quick pass outside, and it is completed. Nice job. I really don't like that it doesn't even tell you the names. I'm trying to learn this team, man. Oh, incomplete over the middle. Don't have a ticker that tells you what just happened like Madden does. That's interesting. Play action. Hampton under pressure. Gets rid of it just in time. It's an intercepted. There is a flag down. But as of now, it's an interception for Midwest. And they have it at the 21. But it's going to be roughing the passer. And that is going to bring the ball back to us and give it to us at the 15. Dying end in motion. Hand off. Oh, play action. Over the middle. Easy touchdown. And we're going to score on our opening drive of the Dynasty. And it's Andrew McElroy with the score right over the middle as they come out for their first drive of the day. I don't know none of these players, so <laughs> good luck with that. They're gonna hand it off to the halfback, and he will take it forward for a short gain of one. They're gonna go hurry up right away. Now we'll call an audible here. Three receivers split to the left. Let's see, what do they got here? Go for the pass, quick shot to the seam, and it's open. And he'll get it to the 40-yard line. No, 45. 
nice completion. And they're going to go right back to the hurry up. They want to try to wear us down on defense. We'll go back to the ground game. That one a little bit more successful as he pushes forward for six. And they have no slowdown in them. My gosh. Oh, call in audibles here again. Get the play call in. Now they have a bunch split out to the right side. And it's a handoff once again to the halfback, and he's got a first down. Oh. And there's another injury for FCS Midwest. Wow. That's the third injury for them. Luckily, we haven't had any yet. Another handoff to the halfback. He breaks free, jukes out of another, and he gets it down to the 35. These games are going pretty fast, considering how much they're just doing hurry up. And another handoff. And that's going to be enough for the first down. Midwest moving the ball with ease, similar to what we did as we approach the five minute mark in the first quarter already. And they'll go right back to him. Bounces outside. He's got a lane, and he's got himself down to the 15 and shoved out. And Midwest is on a roll right now. Got to get the stadium involved here a little bit, but we need the defense to do something to give them a reason. As 31 just continues to hammer home every chance he gets. Hey, that guy was offsides. I have called that. Quick snap, quick throw, and it's incomplete. Finally, the defense gets something going for him. Breaking up the pass, which would have looked like it would have been a touchdown. Going to bring up third and two. Snap. End zone. Bat it down. And we will force... No, they're going to go for it. Fourth and two. From the seven, they need the five. And why not go for it? Uh-oh, going end zone, and it is incomplete. We get a turnover on downs after the aggressive approach Midwest shown, and now we have a chance here to extend our lead. And now Ezekiel Jefferson. Is that, was that the same guy from before? Wow. Second and 10. Pitch to Brown, and he gets destroyed in the backfield. Excellent job by number seven to get back there. Read what was happening and bring him down. Loss of four. It's going to put us in a tough spot here on third down. Hampton back. Looks short. Fires it out to the tight end. And he will get it out to the 11, but not nearly enough for the first, which is going to bring on the punt. My God, there is no in-between play stuff here like there is in Madden. I don't know if that's going to be good or bad for editing. <laughs> you, like, usually when I'm editing these videos, right, or like when I'm recording them, the in-between plays, like if I got to like cough or sneeze or something like that, that's when I can do that or like take a drink. That way you guys don't hear that on the on the recording. Not that I really care if you hear that. I just, why have it in there? But like <laughs> this one, there is no chill. There's no chill at all. So it's just like straight back to back calling. This will be interesting. Second and nine. They have it out already past midfield. It's a quick handoff to the running back and he's going to march forward for a few yards. Third and six. And yeah, they have yet to huddle. They are just going straight to the ball every time. Defense has to do something here. Otherwise, it's going to end up costing us down the stretch of this game. And we get another stop there. Fourth and three. And they're going to go for a long field goal. This one will be 57 yards, looks like. 58. And he got it. I'm surprised. Wow, good for him. And here we are back on offense, third attempt. So far it's been Ontario Brown or nothing, as there he goes, squeaking his way through the line and gets himself a gain of about 12. I love how Brown runs the ball so far. Uh-oh, Hampton in trouble. He's got to get rid of it. Oh, great pickup by Brown. He's got to throw it away. But what a play there by Ontario Brown in pass coverage. 
recognizing the blitz and then wrapping around to pick it up and not getting us a sack. That was big. As a quick pass there to McElroy, goes for six, make this third down a heck of a lot easier, third and four. Hampton takes a snap, looks short. Oh, look at that, nice completion. I believe that's Kenji Lewis, yes it is. Kenji Lewis getting involved here, gets us the first down. And I'm not sure if we're gonna get a snap off here before the end of the quarter. No. All right, to open up the second quarter, we're at midfield. Motion, it's a fake handoff, hand, and well, fake end around, then a handoff to Brown, who takes it forward for eight. He has been a wrecking ball today for us. Second and two, they're crowding the line there. Double A gap look, they fall back. Short screen route to the outside, and it is caught and out of bounds. And I believe that is Thomas on the catch. Gets us another fresh set. There goes Brown again. Track down from behind. Nice job by the defense. There was not many players over there. He probably could have ripped one off for 15, 20 yards. Instead, it's a gain of four. Oh, a nice cut back inside. Gets around the outside, but cannot get enough blocks. There was too many white and orange jerseys over there. It'll end up being third and two after the run. We'll go right back to him. And they shut it down. And it looks like we're going to settle for our own field goal here to make it another seven-point lead. Snap. It's up. And it... What? How the hell are you going to miss that after the dude made a 58-yarder? Well, that was really unfortunate. I can't believe he missed that. Wow. I really thought we were getting that field goal there. That was a chip shot. Oh, a deep pass right over the middle. Wide open receiver down to the 40, and that was a shot. He put it right in his bread basket, and man, they left him wide open up the seam. Go and hurry up here, first and 10. Running back going in motion to the outside. Another deep pass. This one broken up. Here we go, a handoff up the middle, down to the 33. That's gonna be third and four. Quick throw and it is completed. First down. Handoff to the halfback, cuts it back to the right side. It does not work out. They'll get a gain of two. Going right back to the line, calling an audible here. They're running a lot of three and four receiver sets, really spreading us out thin. Handoff, and not much there, a gain of one. And one good thing about that is if we can contain the run, I feel like one of our best like depth spots is actually corner right now. So if they really want to stretch it out like that, it's just in these situations like that check down, is where we're going to struggle because our front seven is not the strongest by any means. And they get us there with a halfback screen. Now they're in a good spot here to put themselves on the board and tie this game up. Little screen route to the outside and that will go for no gain. Nice job staying at home, getting the stop. Tight end is in motion. He's going to take the end around. Oh, 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 look at the moves on him. It got him three yards, but man, it looked like he was going to break somebody's ankles out there. Third and goal. Quarterback rolling, and it is fought for a short gain once again, but that'll lead to fourth, and they'll have to bring on the field goal unit. Make them miss a chip shot. Oh, of course they make it. And here we are. Now up by one, seven to six here. And off to Brown right up the gut, and he just whizzes right past the linebacker on his way to a gain of nine. That man is definitely going to have a 100-yard performance. Knock on wood. Uh, 
Right receiver in motion, end around play. He cuts it back, left side, then back up the middle and finds an open lane and breaks free into the open. 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown Huskies. What a play by Thomas on the end around. I, I thought he was confused for a moment, but he had a vision and he stuck to it. Look at this play. Oh, they didn't even give us a replay. Man, that sucks. That was an incredible play from Kyle Thomas. And that's going to put us back up 14 to 6. And the quick snap, quick throw. And it is completed out to the 30 yard line. Second and two. We got to find a way to slow down this offense, though. They have been. I mean, they have just been killing us all day with this fast approach. And defense is going to end up getting tired here as we near towards the second half. Another handoff. That one does not go far. Another snap, another pass, and... That goes nowhere. Nice play. I believe that was the strong safety, but I'm not 100% certain. Quick snap there. Quarterback's going to take off with it. He slides down, but it's going to be fourth and six. And we're finally going to force them to punt. First punt today for them comes at about three and a half minutes left in the first half. And it is a sky pump. There it is. All right, first and 10 after the punt. 318 left in this first half. And, ooh, it's play action rollout. Hampton looking deep left side. And he's got a man. What a play. All the way in for the touchdown. And guess who? It's Andrew McElroy again. We took the top off of that defense right there. Double coverage, Hampton. Just airs it out. And McElroy, the new transfer from Arkansas Pine Bluff, or Buff, whatever, is making some huge plays in this game as we'll take a 20-6 lead, make that 21-6. And looking here at the team spotlight, we had 219 passing yards, 71 rushing yards, eight and a half yards per play as an average, and 12 first downs in the first half. Big time first half for us as we end up closing out the half 21 to six. After that third touchdown, there just really wasn't a whole lot to, to look at, so we ended up just skipping those drives altogether. This right here was the biggest play though. Kyle Thomas with an absolutely amazing end around to go, at, go up 21 to six. Bouncing back a few times until he found the lane, broke free on a tackle. And then, of course, the big plays by Hampton and McElroy cannot go unnoticed. Hooking up twice for touchdowns as we open up this second half. And let me tell you right now, just that simple replay system that they have for halftime, light years better than what Madden has. And I would actually probably show that in my franchise videos if that was available in Madden. That's crazy. Oh, they'll go a read option. And it's a quick one outside, and it will go for a gain of five. Haven't seen the quarterback run too often. And I'm sorry that I'm calling him the quarterback, but this is a generic team, and I don't know anything about these players. and not telling me the names very much at all. As pass over the middle goes completed. Tackle made by Gassaway there. It at least tells me that, so that's good. And still calling audibles here. And off. Big time run, but he will only get a few yards. He'll make it five. Beaver in motion here on second. And there'll be a screen. There is nobody over there, and he'll get an easy first down. 
We recovered nicely to get in place to at least not allow a huge, uh, a huge gain. But they do end up getting the first down. Nice play call there. And go right back to the halfback. And oh man, that was a big hit. He'll get it for four. Moving on now towards getting into our territory at the 42 yard or 47 yard line. Hand off and it's wrapped up quickly. Defense has started doing a much better job since like the first two drives. They've really sort of settled down, stayed home, and not allowed too much craziness to happen as he rips one off for 15. They're just going to keep running. Why not? Lane opens up on the outside, and he is open and in the space for... No, he's. I thought he was going to score, man. I really did. But we end up tracking him down at the two-yard line. What a run. He started off inside, but then realized there was not a soul on the outside. Bounced it out there and had a clear running lane almost to the end zone. They go back to him, and he gets smothered in the backfield. Actually, no, that was a different running back. Yeah, he had to check out. He was tired. Don't blame him. Second and goal. Midwest needs some points here. And that will go nowhere. Do they not show, like, their names because they're, like, a, a generic team? Like, you guys know? Because that's so weird. Quick snap, and he finds an open receiver in the end zone for the touchdown. Finally, they'll get on the board with a touchdown instead of some field goals. And that is going to make it 21-13. to 13. Here we go. First snap, and it's a pass to the tight end. And we'll get it out for another first down. Excellent job. I really got to do a better job of learning all these guys' names. Like, I know I went through the team beforehand, but, like, it's a little different in the moment of trying to remember everybody's name. So I'm going to – I'll work on that as we get our potentially first flag of the day, a big run for Brown. And it looks like it's coming back. It is. It's a holding penalty. And that's going to be called on Jake Applegate. Well, now we remember. 80 Applegate. Remember that, guys. I'm going to try to. I'm pretty sure the other tight end's name is Graham. I know that guy's name. Ontario Brown takes it for a few. Second and 13. He is tired. Of course he is. Oh, look at that strike to Lewis. A beautiful throw by Hampton. And a first down on second and 13. That was a big time throw. Hampton is looking really good right now. There goes Brown again. Wide open lane, running over defenders on his way to the 35. I am loving the way that guy runs, man. He runs with so much force. Lewis in motion. He'll take the end around. Gets outside. 25 and knocked out at the 20. Ethan Hampton today, three touchdowns, 262 yards. He has been on fire for us. And there's a handoff to Williams, his first carry of the day. And it goes for no gain. You got to give Brown some breaks. I mean, my God, the guy's got to be super tired. As he gets the pass out of the backfield and down to the 14. Third and three now. Play action. Hampton looking end zone, and he finds Applegate down to the one. Is it Applegate or is it Applegate? Applegate. Applegate? I don't know. Oh, a keeper for Brown, and he's in for the touchdown. I didn't even realize we were in like a wildcat. And Ontario Brown gets his first touchdown of the season. Snap, quick pass, and it's completed. Just shy of the first down. Midwest, I think they're starting to feel that they need to really do something here because we are not slowing down on offense. And it is getting later and later as we near the end of the third quarter. Oh my God, I thought that was picked. 
I can't believe that was not intercepted. I really thought that was going to be picked off. Wow. Another quick pass, and that one is completed. Once again, they're going to go with the hurry up here. Second and three. Looking short, finds a man, and he's got it across midfield, and the first. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to have to really do a lot of depth chart adjusting throughout the games. Oh my god, what a big run. That was a big run. But as I was saying, I, I, I'm not sure how the wear and tear system works when it's CPU versus CPU. I'm sure, obviously, it still happens. So we, we might end up coming to a point where I have to go in, you know, in the third quarter or something and take players out for a little bit to let them rest up. Maybe not right away in week one, but it's going to be something I'm going to have to keep an eye on because it's, you know, one of the features of this game. And another short pass met immediately. Third and eight. There's the snap. Once again, going underneath, he finds a man open down to the, what, the seven? Yeah, Not, or eight yard line they mark it at. A little short, but whatever. I'm okay with it. That was a nice play. And that was the same guy that scored the touchdown before. I think his name is Quinn Bayer, if I remember seeing correctly. And they're trying to get the run game going. It looks as if we have made some adjustments, though, because the run game is definitely not as strong as it was in the first quarter, which is a good sign. But they have now shifted their focus to sort of the underneath stuff, and it's been working. Those have not been working, though, for either team today for the most part. We'll shut that down. Third and goal now, all the way back at the 14. That was a very big loss the last two plays. Drops back, looking end zone. Got it for the touchdown. He finds his tight end. And FCS Midwest is not going anywhere just yet. Back on offense here, up by eight. And off to Brown. That gets nowhere. 44 came in with a mission. And we got to do something, man. I mean, they are sticking right with us. Every time we think we put them down and we got ourselves a good lead, they come right back. And they're really just eight points away from tying this up as we near the end of the third quarter. Look at those rushing numbers, though. Both running backs having Jasper Bracey is his name. Okay, so Bracey. Remember that. Him and Brown having a very big day. Bracey actually having a better day right now than that of Brown, statistically. Throw over the middle, and it is McElroy once again getting out to the 43. And we go with our own little hurry up here. First down. Hand off to Brown, and that gets shut down. Back to pass, looks short. It's Applegate, and he will get it for a short gain as well. Third and seven coming up. I feel like right now with the momentum Midwest has off that last drive, we gotta make sure we do something. There we go. Completion to Lewis, gets us down to the close of the 40. And that will get us a fresh set of downs, desperately needed. Elroy takes the fake, and oh my god, they did not fall for either fake. And it was number 29 coming through on the blitz and gets the first sack of the day for Midwest. We had two earlier during the drives that we skipped. That was Darius Blake, the strong safety coming up, and he gets themselves a big sack. And that could be a big, you know, change of momentum for this drive. We have not had a negative play like that so far today. Short pass incomplete. Nice job there on the coverage. Now third and 18, so now we're going to have to go deep. Hampton with the snap. 
He's got somebody on the right side, and what a beautiful pass over the shoulder to Kyle Thomas, who pulls it in down at the 24. And that has got to be a heartbreaker if you're Midwest. You probably think we just got a big sack. We can get off the field here. And then they follow it up with a big play to the corner. Hampton looking short for McElroy, and he's got another first. Fake to McElroy and a handoff to Brown and he is, oh my God, I thought he was in. But they're gonna mark him just shy at the half yard line. Gotta give it back to Brown, man. Get him two touchdowns. Oh, play action. Hampton, back of the end zone, touchdown, Kenji Lewis. He's getting everybody involved today. 35 to 20. That was a big drive there. Kenji Lewis and Andrew McElroy have proven to be much better receivers than what I initially claimed them to be with their overall for us. We'll see how it goes for the rest of the season as we face stiffer competition, but as of right now, they have been holding it down with Ethan Hampton. 35 to 20. Quick pass outside completed. That was a nice quick throw. He got downfield very quickly. I think I caught the corner off guard a little bit. He was sort of turned around there as he made the catch. Midwest feeling the pressure. Hand off. Oh crap, I forgot his name. Was it Basky or Basky or something like that? Something weird like that. I can't believe I already forgot it. I just said I was going to remember it too. Bracy? Is it Bracy? I think it's Bracy. Where, where did I get Basky from? Pretty sure it's Bracy. We're going to call him Bracy. And off to Bracy. And he gets demolished. Big play from Davis there. Second and 15. Deep pass right side. It's caught. Breaks free from one. And he's finally dragged down at the 13. And another injury, and it's Henderson. I swear to God, that guy's been hurt four times in this game alone. And off to Bracey. I'm going to laugh. That's not his name. And I'm just, like, assuming it is, but it's what I know him as right now. Drop back, lets it go short, and it is completed. Gain of six. Second and four is Midwest. Knowing they need a touchdown, trying to draw something up. Quick snap, quick pass. What a throw, but it's incomplete. I mean, he tried to take a shot there, give his player a, a chance to make a play, but it was very tight coverage. Under pressure, he gets held up by his own lineman who's downed on the field and he'll end up leading to a sack. And it was Davis in on it again. He was part of one of the sacks earlier today as he has stepped up as well along the defensive line. Yeah, he shoved him to the ground and that was actually the player that fell into him. So Davis has really caused that entire situation to happen. Awesome to see that. First and 10 now for us as we're going to hand it off to Brown and Brown is going to get shut down after a yard I'm thinking at this point I'm going to actually after this play I'm going to back out and see if like what the wear and tear system is looking like quick snap incomplete All right, so I just decided to let it ride the wear and tear system was not showing anything so I'm assuming it's going to be more of like as we get farther into the season as a pass outside there to Thomas yields a first down and we really just need a couple of firsts and we can close this thing out. Drops back, looks over the middle. I don't even know how he found him open, but he was wide open and he's gone for a touchdown. And it's the tight end. He's doing the gritty. It's Barnes, that's his name. And is it Graham Barnes? I think. That was not a very good gritty, by the way. 
Grayson Barnes. I knew it was something with a G. Grayson Barnes gets absolutely wide open. He got matched up on 56, which looks like it must have been a mismatch. And he just burned everybody to the house. That right there is pretty much the nail in the coffin for FCS Midwest. And that was it, folks. They ended up forcing them to score two touchdowns when I just simmed the rest of the game. Two amazing 70-yard touchdowns, but whatever. We get the win. We are going home with a victory. And this is right here, definitely the player of the game. 439 yards passing, five touchdowns for Ethan Hampton. What a day. And, of course, Kyle Thomas. I mean, everybody had a huge day. Kyle Thomas, Andrew McElroy, Kenji Lewis, even Grayson Barnes getting involved. It was a big day for our offense altogether, and we are going to go home 1-0 and in our opening play of the series. Okay, so we have some news here. So we have Kevin Neal, who reached his top five schools, and we're in that. Junior Abram also reached his top five school, his top three school, or bleh, top five schools, and we are literally the only leaders there. So that's big news for us. And then Trevor Kiki is down to top eight, and we are the top offer there as well. The only person we lost out on was Sidney Dunham, which I did have a sneaky suspicion was going to happen because that team really jumped out in front very quickly. Nobody else had any traction. So that is our summary for the week. And then school update. Um, championship contender, we did get a little bit of a raise in there after our big win. Program tradition. Why did that go down? I'll, I'll have to figure out why. Brand exposure went up a little bit, so that's good. Um, yeah, playing style, playing time, none of that really changed at all. We saw the same people at risk of, of leaving due to these situations, but overall, decent week. And look at that. Ivan Davis was listed as the player of the week with his sack and five tackles for loss. He did have a pretty big week for us. It didn't start off hot, but he, towards the you know second quarter-ish, more towards halftime and second half he really turned it on he was also the national player of the week not wow not just conference that's big but this one is going to be a big tough one because we have we opened up with midwest it was a big game for us and now we have to go on the road to take on notre dame number eight ranked school in the country that is going to be a very very big yeah, I mean, that's, that is going to be... Wow, that's going to be a tough challenge here. Uh, let's see. Recruiting-wise, I want to check this out before we stop. Just to see if any of these players have gotten any closer to... You know, siding with us. Dante Streeter, we're still good there. Abram, we're still good there. We're almost to McCaleb. We're almost there. Um, I think we're out of the race here with Ray D'Amico, which is fine. Same with Jalen Warren. Even though teams really haven't had too much influence, it's really just been his own personal, you know, where he wants to go. We are really far behind in the Nicholas Hamilton search. And Paul Carew, we didn't make a lot of, of effort on yet, but we are still there with Minnesota. So we'll we'll see where that goes. Dremble, we are at third. Oh my God, Lucian is close to committing, I think. We moved up to number one now for him. So I would like to get him scouted the rest of the way so we at least know what we're getting into. Actually, I mean, it doesn't really pay. I mean, we, we know we need a lineman. He's he's willing to come. He's one of the best ones that we were able to find, so we're just going to roll with it. Doesn't pay to spend the points there. Um, we're still good there. We're leading with Gills. We ended up moving up to one after offering him the scholarship. That's good. Got locked out by Dunham. Yep, I sort of expected that. And, oh, man, Wisconsin is the one. They are pushing really hard for him. We have to do a lot. We already have 50 hours worked in with him, too. Dang. Okay, we're going to have to try and... Yeah, I'm going to have to think about how we can work that because we definitely need to be in there. Ooh, we ended up getting into first for James Kindred. Off of just offering him a scholarship. So that is big. Uh, Trevor Kiki, same with him. We go all the way up to, to number one with the scholarship offer. Um, we're still in on Leon Widmer. 
and Ahmad Carter. We are by far his favorite team right now. That's big. We are inching closer to the top. We're at number four with McLoster. Nowhere near the top with LaRue. And same with Gainwell. And we haven't really made much attempt with the safeties, but we do still have a chance there. And we haven't made attempt here with him. So that is where we're at right now. We will, of course, go into this with more detail as we get farther along into the season and, of course, make adjustments when players, you know, commit elsewhere and we get commits. Um, that'll, of course, change our, our approach as well. So hopefully things will start to round out. Um, this, I'm hoping, goes well. I This is the first Dynasty episode I've ever done. This is really the first big Dynasty I've ever have done myself. Like, like I told you guys before, wasn't a big NCAA 14 guy because I was like during the a few years of my life where I just didn't even have a gaming console. I didn't play games. Um, There's also, you know, around the time my daughter was born. So that sort of goes hand in hand, I guess. But um, what I'm trying to say is I'm hoping this goes well. If there's anything that you guys know of that I can be doing differently with these that you guys are, are used to seeing or things that you want to see more of, please let me know. I am not an expert with the college football stuff yet. I'm working hard to become one, but it's still in the works. So I appreciate you guys so much for watching. Before you leave, if you get that like button, it means a lot to me. Subscribe if you have not already, and turn on that bell notification. I will see you guys next time.